Hello, I'm Sarah Schutt, the Executive Director of the Wisconsin Alumni Association. We're excited to bring you a special edition of One on One at One Alumni Place, featuring a conversation between Balab Sambamurthy, the new Dean of the Wisconsin School of Business, and Mike Kinetter, former Dean and currently CEO and President of the Wisconsin Foundation and Alumni Association. You won't want to miss hearing them talk about the future of business education and envisioning the Wisconsin School of Business as a hub for lifelong learning. We hope you enjoy this conversation. Well, good morning, Samba. It's great to have you here at Wisconsin. Uh, it's great that you've taken up your office in Granger Hall and you and your wife have moved to Madison. So you bring a lot of experience into this role, obviously and I was hoping you could maybe tell our audience a bit about your background and uh, what led up to this point. Sure. It's been a wonderful journey. In one sense, it's a journey that started in India where my first degree was uh, in engineering and I really developed a love for quantitative thinking and numbers and uh, just the analytical thinking. But in reading an influential book by Drucker, the world of business really fascinated me. And so I pivoted to a business school where I developed a love for marketing and strategy. And I really thought that was going to be my career. But in those days, what we call information systems today was still a very emerging discipline. And I was fascinated by the fact that technology and what we call digitization today would one day become our future. I also began to feel a, a, a gap in my uh, happiness. And I realized that I really would enjoy being in a classroom in front of students because that was the best memory I had of business school. So that led me to Minnesota to do a PhD in information systems. The other part of it is that I actually began my career totally devoted to research and teaching and loved the classroom and loved uh, establishing my street cred as a researcher. Mm. But at Michigan State, I got a variety of administrative opportunities and I began to enjoy it. And that uh, led to my path to Wisconsin. Well, that's, that's a great story. What, what in particular drew you to the Wisconsin School of Business, if I could ask? You know, Wisconsin has always been a place that I've admired, even from the days when I was a graduate student at Minnesota. Well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, other <laughs> side. And uh, if you keep in mind that Minnesota never won a football game when I was there. And the <laughs> scores were typically 71-0. And I'm sure that uh, Wisconsin perpetrated that on us, too. <laughs> but uh, great faculty. There were some of my professors who came from Wisconsin. But then, more importantly, I began to recognize that the University of Wisconsin has been a great pioneer in many ways, whether it be the forming the consortium or uh, making innovations in MBA education and experiential learning and so on. I was also impressed by the passion and the loyalty of the alumni. The Wisconsin Naming Partners is a great example. I remember reading about this in 2007, and I thought that was fairly impressive that a group of alumni would make such a big uh, donation and uh, investment, yet at the same time, uh, allow the school to keep its name. And I consider myself to be singularly fortunate to be associated with the leadership of such a school with a distinctive legacy and a great future. Uh, you have a daughter who's taking a job in digital marketing, yeah. and you know, you have your own background in digital economy and digital transformation of yeah. business. And that was another thing that was very compelling to us about your uh, opportunity to be the leader of the school yeah. at this time. So could you talk a little bit about um, digital transformation sure. and, and how you see that happening and playing out in the economy and then maybe how that applies to yeah. business schools as well? It's amazing that what many of us have prognosticated for 15 years has arrived and everything we do actually uh, represents the big transformations. Somehow we haven't uh, recognized the changes in our lives. I jokingly say that uh, 15 years ago, 
driving to a new city meant having your own copy of the Rand McNally map. Remember that big map? The biggest source of arguments between spouses was For who sure. made the navigation, <laughs> who took the wrong turn, right? And imagine today, where is that Ryan McNally? It's yeah. gone. Yeah. Where is the GPS? It's gone. It's our smartphone. And uh, so think about how integral the smartphone has become to our lives. It has challenged companies to think about the fact that their customers will only do things with their smartphones. So do you have an app? But building an app in itself is not the issue. Do you have all the right processes and the data? Think about employees of today. Think about customers, suppliers, employees. So that's one way of thinking about digitization, which is the technology, but more fundamentally, innovation through technology. We're looking at companies like Google, uh, Facebook, Netflix. Sometimes we don't realize that these companies are only 15 years old, yet they are the center of the universe, and they are disrupting every industry. So fundamentally, digitization is really about innovation. It's not new, but it is innovation at breakneck speed. So digital transformation is yeah. something that business schools need to be aware of to help businesses yes. with these problems. Yes. But of course, universities themselves yeah. are a type of yes. economic entity. Yeah. How will digital transformation affect universities yeah. and specifically business schools? Yeah. And what do you see the implications being for the Wisconsin School of Business? Digitization is disrupting our own business. And uh, are we really looking at digitization and the disruption to see where we should be in the future? But for a moment, if we talk about graduates, what is clear now is that uh, the, the, the skilled workforce, their skills will start becoming obsolete once every five years, if not sooner. So we are beginning to hear the word lifelong learning, that uh, the, the managers and the workers will continually need to upskill and reskill themselves. And that's an important role for a business school and for university. So given the digital transformation and other things happening in the economy, Many business schools are grappling with the right mix uh, of programs in their portfolio. Uh, why is it important for business schools to have a broad portfolio, in your opinion? I think that business schools are at this interesting inflection point, which is what is our role in society and what is our role in educating the workforce of the future? In that regard, I have come to observe that the top business schools do have a broad portfolio of programs, just like any top company caters to a wide variety of needs. Uh, so a good portfolio has uh, some of the elements such as a robust and vigorous BBA, because the undergraduate program is growing very rapidly at most business schools, so the BBA is still very important. But at the same time, in the sense of lifelong learning, there is a tremendous need for specialization, whether it be analytics, supply chain, healthcare. And so uh, top business schools are recognizing that by building a full suite of specialty master's programs. That's where online may become an important platform but that's what I call learning on demand. That is when you need to upskill yourself, you should come back as a badger and get a badger specialty masters. And by the way, there are other models emerging which are not just degrees, but also certificates. And there's a newer concept called digital badges, which all goes into the notion of learning on demand. So we must uh, think about that. And then of course, uh, the MBA and the evening MBA and the executive MBA, they do serve a special purpose because still there is a robust demand out there for such graduates. And with the right balance and focus, these programs will continue to serve the needs even in a digital economy. And then of course, uh, Wisconsin has had a proud tradition of producing PhD graduates 
who've gone on to become top scholars. When I think about uh, some of the top scholars in different business disciplines, and even deans, some of the f uh, deans of uh, many business schools are Wisconsin alums. And then, of course, you referenced uh, executive education. Shouldn't we be catering to the talent needs of Wisconsin corporations before we conquer the world? So in that sense, it's important to think about the portfolio with the right balance mm -hmm. and with a judicious uh, deployment of resources. But I think uh, that's the job that any CEO faces in a business organization. And I think a dean should also recognize that and figure out how to build that portfolio. So Samba, maybe you could you know, address sort of more head on, what has your experience taught you about the role and relevance of the full-time MBA program? We've seen a lot of debates, discussions, and experiments about the, the role of the full-time MBA program. Having led the MBA program in my former place at Michigan State, my own belief is that the full-time MBA continues to remain a relevant and robust program for most business schools. The real question is, uh, what is the curriculum and what is the role and is the MBA program aligned with the needs of the economy? Surely there are challenges. So for example, we are seeing more global competition. But in my view, the answer about the role and relevance of a full-time MBA is very specific to each business school in light of everything else that they are doing. When I think about the Wisconsin School of Business, as an outsider, I perceived a few strengths that made the program unique. So for example, the specialization model was a great immersion into experiential learning. And I've always felt that Wisconsin invented experiential learning before it entered into the lexicon of most other MBA programs. And particularly, the, the experiential learning at Wisconsin is an immersion. It's, it's almost a one-year immersion, unlike uh, most other programs where it's basically one semester. Right? So that's an invaluable learning in the field, but it is also an invaluable way of connecting uh, the companies with the graduates. Mm. And as a result, it's not surprising that uh, I believe that the Wisconsin full-time MBA does very well in terms of its placement rates and where the companies are. So when I look at uh, us, I believe that uh, we have the solid foundation. And uh, what we need to do is think about what else we might do in reimagining the full-time MBA. For example, we should take a look at incorporating business analytics. We should look at uh, the role of technology. And uh, we should look at how do we build a, a more robust student recruitment and attraction. And let me also add that uh, in addition to the full-time MBA, there is a continued relevance for the evening MBA and the executive MBA. And so I look at that as another portfolio which has relevance. Mm -hmm. And uh, given the right attention to uh, the differentiation, the branding and marketing and placement, I believe we can continue to enhance our image in that space. I've really been impressed with the amount of time you've put in, getting to know the place and its people, the issues, and uh, I just really applaud your approach to everything. Uh, as I said, what I drew me to uh, Wisconsin was the, the depth and the passion of the alumni. It's just amazing how quickly mm -hmm. they have adopted me. So it's like uh, becoming a member of a family, mm -hmm. and that's what gets me energized. Well, I think uh, after people get to know you, they want to adopt you pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So tell us a little bit, and I know what the last six months has looked like for you. What, what do you see ahead you know, in the next six months, what will you be focused on? Sure. I had started my term by saying I'm on a listening tour, though I recently learned that every leader uses the same word, so I'm beginning to wonder what's beyond listening. So I would say that my next six months are really uh, focused on listening, reacting, and adapting. And what that means is that uh, this is a great institution with very passionate faculty, staff, 
uh, administration at the university level and alumni and students. So I have uh, worked on a variety of ways of reaching out and engaging them. I have done some travels and I am actually going to hit the road in fall and going to many cities where our alumni are to continue to reach out to them. We've also launched a strategic planning process. Now, sometimes strategic planning in an academic institution can be one step better than root canal. <laughs> so I'm trying to create a process which is more about empowering the voice of the stakeholders. So the plan is important, but more important is the process to ensure mm -hmm. that everybody had a voice. So it sounds like you're going to be really busy communicating with stakeholders on your listening tour, doing some strategic planning, and I know all of that's going to be incredibly fun for you. Is there anything else that you might do for fun, Samba? Could you tell us a bit about that? Sure, Mike. I'm looking forward to Camp Randall <laughs> football, and um, you might catch me doing the Wisconsin jump around. So that will be a great fall tradition that I'm looking forward to. Well, it will be great to have you in Camp Randall, and I think we've got a date this year at Camp Randall with Michigan State. And I was <laughs> Homecoming. Thinking, I was thinking we probably need some uh, equipment for you. I don't know if you're ready to suit up for that game or not. Suit me up. We got you a little something. Oh, wow. Uh, I hope you might uh, find a good use for this. All right. Good. I think that's going to look good on you. Uh, <laughs> Wonderful. And Mike, I got a gift for you. Really? This is for donating to the Goodwill. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, these, these products will go well with Goodwill. <laughs> um, I, I know right where it is, Samba. I All was right. wondering if you had anything that you wanted to contribute, and this will do just fine. Thank Wonderful. you. Well, it's Mike, great to great spend this time. talking to you, and thank you very much.